Welcome to session one of AI playing D&D characters. For entertainment purposes, I'm not going to be going back and forth between ChatGPT. I'll be sitting here in Tailspire like it's an active D&D session. I'll have a link below if you're interested in Tailspire as well. I'm also using an AI text-to-speech program called Levin Labs to voice the characters. So that way, anything that ChatGPT is saying, the AI voice will be saying. Okay, we're ready to start the adventure. I've gone ahead and given ChatGPT a prompt to try to make it act as much as a real player as possible. First, I want to start off with introducing the characters. Okay, Sir Aldrich, you're up first. Greetings. I am Sir Aldrich Thorne, Paladin of the Oath of the Crown. I am here to uphold justice and protect those in need. As you can see, I am a tall and imposing figure with a muscular build. My auburn hair is streaked with grey, and my piercing steel-blue eyes reflect my commitment to my cause. I wear gleaming plate armour adorned with symbols of justice, and I carry a large, well-worn shield that has seen many battles. My role is to lead and shield my comrades, and I take my oath very seriously. If there is injustice to be fought or a wrong to be righted, you can count on me to stand firm and see it through. V, you're next. Hello, I'm V Gale. I'm a mastermind rogue, specializing in strategy and subterfuge. I'm here to provide keen insights and tactical support to our group. I might not always be in the spotlight, but my skills are invaluable when it comes to navigating tricky situations and outsmarting our foes. I prefer to stay in the background, using my expertise to gather information and plan our moves with precision. As for my appearance, I blend in seamlessly with my surroundings, ensuring that I'm always ready to adapt and respond to whatever comes our way. I'm excited to see how we can use our combined strengths to achieve our goals. And Leora? Greetings. I'm Leora Starfawn, a druid of the Circle of Stars. My connection with the celestial and natural realms guides me in both my magic and my actions. I have a calm and nurturing presence, and I'm here to bring balance and healing to our group. My abilities allow me to harness the power of the stars and transform into various animals, aiding us in both combat and exploration. I dress in practical yet elegant attire that reflects my bond with nature, often adorned with symbols of the cosmos. Whether you need healing, protection, or a guiding hand, I am here to support our journey with both wisdom and strength. I look forward to working with all of you to overcome the challenges we will face. And last, Kalem, can you introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Kylum, a divine soul sorcerer. My abilities are rooted in divine magic, and I carry a sense of responsibility to use my gifts for the greater good. My appearance reflects my celestial heritage. My hair is a deep brown streaked with shimmering gold, and my eyes shine with a soft otherworldly light. I wear elegant robes that are adorned with divine symbols, and I carry a small holy symbol that represents my connection to the heavens. Despite my powers, I remain humble and introspective, often seeking guidance from the divine. I'm here to aid and protect, using my spells to heal, bless, and guide us through our journey. I look forward to discovering our purpose together and striving to fulfill my own quest for redemption. Okay, now to give you guys some backstory about the campaign. The city of Neverwinter stands proudly on the Sword Coast, west and north of Deserin Valley. Fifty years ago, the city was nearly destroyed by the eruption of Mount Hotenau. Today, the city stands mostly rebuilt. It bustles with skilled tradespeople, intrepid adventurers, and hardy townsfolk. Leadership in Neverwinter falls to Dagalt Never Ember, Lord Protector of the City and your employer. The city lacks a formal militia, so Lord Never Ember often hires mercenaries and adventurers such as yourselves to keep the city secure. Having introduced yourselves and grouping up, you set out on patrol. While patrolling back alleys, you hear an anguished scream erupt from a nearby alley. 
The sound comes from a slender human woman clad in the light leather armor of a scout or investigator. Clutched in her arms is the dead body of a human man clad in tattered gray robe. The man and woman bear striking resemblance to each other. With a dull thump, a desiccated eyeball rolls out of the dead man's palm. I heard that scream. Let's hurry! Sir Aldrich rushes towards the alley, his heavy armor clanking with each step. Upon seeing the woman and the dead man, he approaches with a look of concern. By the gods, what has happened here? He takes a moment to assess the scene and offers a comforting hand to the grieving woman. V follows closely, her eyes sharp as she observes the situation. Stay alert. This might not be as straightforward as it seems. She approaches the woman carefully, trying to gather information without causing further distress. Can you tell us what happened? How did he die? Leora steps forward, her demeanor calm and soothing as she examines the body and the surroundings. I'll check if there are any signs of foul play or magical influence. She looks at the desiccated eyeball and the man's body, using her druidic senses to sense if there's any lingering magic or natural disturbance. Keelum approaches slowly, his divine aura casting a gentle light over the scene. He looks at the woman with compassion and concern. Please, let us help you. We need to understand what happened here. I can offer comfort and aid if you're in need. He also takes note of any divine or magical clues around the body, focusing on the potential significance of the eyeball. Okay, V, since you seem to be trying to gather information, I want you to go ahead and make a history check. Rolling. Result. 12. V's history bonus is plus 5. Total. 17. Ah, uh, V, your history is not plus five, it's just plus two. Got it. With a history bonus of plus two, the total result is 14. V, with that roll, you realize that these two are mercenaries employed by Lord Never Ember. V's eyes narrow as she processes the information. These two, Delvin and Kivori, were mercenaries working for Lord Neverember. I've seen them around before. This makes their deaths particularly troubling. She glances around the alleyway for any signs of what might have happened. Mercenaries employed by Lord Neverember. This is deeply concerning. We need to find out who did this and why. He turns to the woman with a reassuring nod. Can you tell us anything about what happened before you found them? Kivori responds to the group. She tells them that her and her brother were tasked by Lord Never Ember to investigate suspicious cult activity in the city. Kivori came here to rendezvous with Delvin after he'd infiltrated a potential cult hideout. The only clue Kivori has is the desiccated eyeball that dropped from Delvin's hand. She asks the characters to please aid her in uncovering who or what killed her brother while she returns to the Hall of Justice to inform Lord Never Ember of these developments. She implores you to avenge her brother's death, but also reminds you that Lord em Never Ember values information and will pay more for capturing cultists alive. Leora and Kylum, looking at the eyeball, you notice it gives off the faint magical aura of a magical item. Leora looks at the faint magical aura surrounding the eyeball with a thoughtful expression. This eyeball is definitely enchanted, though the magic is subtle. It might be connected to what happened here. She gently uses her druidic senses to investigate further. Keelum's eyes are drawn to the faint magical trace on the eyeball. Given the magical presence here, it's possible that this eyeball has significance beyond just being a strange artifact. It might be worth examining it more closely or consulting someone who specializes in magical items. He focuses on providing comfort to the woman, but his attention remains on the magical trace. Sir Aldrich nods solemnly, his expression serious. Understood. We will investigate and find out who is behind this. 
You have my word that we will do everything in our power to uncover the truth and bring those responsible to justice. He places a reassuring hand on Kevry's shoulder. Return to Lord Never Ember and keep him informed. We will follow the lead you've given us and seek out this cult. V looks thoughtfully at the desiccated eyeball, taking in all the details. Capturing the cultists alive makes sense. It could provide us with more information about their operations and plans. I'll start by examining this eyeball more closely to see if it offers any additional clues. She carefully inspects the magical trace on the eyeball, noting any symbols or markings that might provide further insight. Leora continues to focus on the magical trace, using her knowledge of nature and magic to glean more information. I'll use my druidic abilities to see if I can discern any specific details about the enchantment on the eyeball. It might give us a better idea of the cult's methods or objectives. Carlum steps forward with a calm but determined demeanor. I will assist in any way I can. Once we have more information, we should be ready to act quickly. I'll also prepare some spells that might help us in our search for this cult. He prepares his spells, ensuring he is ready to provide both healing and protection as needed. Okay, since V and Leora are both concentrating on the eyeball, V, I want you to go ahead and roll an Arcana check with advantage since Leora is helping you. Sure. I'll roll 2d20s for V and use the higher result for her Arcana check, adding her Arcana bonus, plus 2. Highest roll, 18, plus 2 equals 20. Alright, V, with that roll, you realize that this must be a magical item, but without the identify spell, there's no way to figure out how to activate it or what magic it is made of. You figure there must be another clue to activate the item. V examines the desiccated eyeball more closely, her eyes narrowing as she pieces together her findings. This is definitely a magical item. But without knowing how to activate it, we're at a bit of a disadvantage. There might be some sort of clue or mechanism related to this item that we haven't discovered yet. She looks around the alley and the surrounding area, searching for any signs or symbols that might provide a hint about how to use the eyeball. Agreed. We should move quickly. If Delvin was investigating a cult hideout, that's our next best lead. He prepares to leave the alleyway, ready to follow up on the next lead. V realize that there are no other clues in the alleyway, only the dead body of Delvin. V looks around the alleyway, confirming that there are no additional clues to be found. It seems we've exhausted the immediate surroundings. There's nothing else here except for Delvin's body and the eyeball. She turns back to the group. We might need to consider other approaches. Perhaps examining the hideout Delvin was investigating could yield more information. Or, if we can't find anything here, we might need to consult someone who can identify magical items or give us more context about the cult. Agreed. We should move quickly. If Delvin was investigating a cult hideout, that's our next best lead. He prepares to leave the alleyway, ready to follow up on the next lead. Well, players, you don't know where the hideout is, so you're going to have to think of something else. We need to find out where Delvin was investigating. Kevori might have more information about the hideout. Or, if not, we can inquire with Lord Neverember once we've returned to the Hall of Justice. He looks to the group for their thoughts. I agree. Speaking with Lord Neverember will help us understand the situation better and provide us with the necessary direction. 
Let's head to the Hall of Justice and see what we can learn. Going back to the Hall of Justice sounds like a good idea, but what are you going to do with Delvin's body? We should ensure that Delvin's body is handled properly. We can either take it to the Hall of Justice ourselves or notify the authorities to deal with it. He looks to the group for their thoughts. I agree that taking the body might be the best course of action. It ensures that Delvin is given proper respect and might yield further clues. Okay, setting off to the Hall of Justice. Kavori will follow you, helping you with Delvin's body. Arriving at the Hall of Justice, you meet a man dressed in robes that you recognize as a wizard and assistant to Lord Never Ember. You seem surprised as you bring in a dead body. What would you like to say? Sir Aldric approaches the wizard with a respectful nod. Greetings. We have urgent news for Lord Never Ember. This is Delvin, one of the mercenaries he employed. He was found dead under suspicious circumstances. We believe it may be related to the cult activity he was investigating. He places a steady hand on the body, ensuring it is handled with care. Where can we find Lord Never Ember? V steps forward, her eyes scanning the wizard for any signs of recognition or concern. And perhaps you can inform Lord Neverember immediately. We need his guidance on the matter, and to provide him with all the information we have gathered. The wizard tells you that Lord Neverember is off working on other duties governing the city, but maybe he can be of help. What have you found? Sir Aldric addresses the wizard with a serious tone. We found Delvin dead in an alleyway. He was clutching a desiccated eyeball which appears to be a magical item. Kavori, his sister, mentioned that they were investigating suspicious cult activity in the city. He gestures to the body and the eyeball. This eyeball might hold clues about what happened or who is responsible. We also know that Lord Never Ember values information and would prefer cultists to be captured alive if possible. V adds her observations, her tone precise. The magical trace on the eyeball suggests it's enchanted, but without an identify spell, we can't determine its exact function. We were hoping that Lord Neverember might provide more insight or resources to help us uncover the significance of the item. Identify spell, you say? May I? The wizard appears to be casting identify on the eyeball. After a moment, he realizes that the eyeball seems to be some sort of tracking magic. He tells the group that if they speak the command phrase, Hail the Undying, that the eyeball will activate and should point down roads and alleyways until you come to whatever the eyeball has been attuned to. V examines the eyeball closely, considering the implications. Let's use the command phrase and see where it leads us. This might bring us closer to uncovering the cult's location or any other important clues. I agree. We should proceed cautiously and be prepared for any potential dangers. If the eyeball is leading us somewhere, we need to be ready for what we might encounter. After activating the eyeball, it leads you down a few streets and back alleys until you find yourselves in the same alleyway that Delvin had died in. The eye seems to point further in. Sir Aldric looks around the familiar alleyway, frowning as he notices that they've returned to the same location where Delvin was found. It seems the eyeball has led us back to the scene of Delvin's death. We should continue following its direction. There may be another clue or hidden area we've missed. He approaches the area where the eyeball is pointing, ready to search for any additional signs or clues. Calum watches the group and stands ready to provide assistance or guidance. I'll be on alert for any divine signs or omens. If there's a deeper connection or purpose here, it might be revealed through these clues. The eyeball seems to lead you down further into more alleyways. Eventually, you turn a corner, find yourselves looking at 
what appears to be covering for the sewer. And the eyeball points directly down. Sir Aldrich approaches the sewer hatch, examining it closely. It looks like the trail leads us underground. We'll need to open this hatch to proceed. Be on your guard. Sewers can be dangerous and full of unexpected threats. He prepares to open the hatch, making sure the group is ready for whatever might be inside. V examines the hatch and its surroundings for any traps or signs of recent use. I'll check for any traps or signs that this hatch has been tampered with. We don't want to be caught off guard. I'll stay alert for any changes in the environment or magical disturbances. If there's something hidden, or if the sewer holds any natural threats, I'll do my best to detect them. I'm ready to provide support and protection. Let's proceed with caution. We don't know what we might encounter down there. V, as you move forward, you see no signs of traps. The hatch looks safe. You open up the hatch and see a ladder descending about 20 feet down into catacombs. So Aldrich peers down the ladder into the catacomb, noting the depth and the dim light below. Looks like it's safe to descend. I'll go first to ensure the way is clear. Stay close and be prepared for anything. He carefully begins to descend the ladder, checking for stability as he goes. V follows Sir Aldrich, moving with practiced stealth. I'll be right behind you, watching for any signs of movement or danger as we enter. Leora readies herself to descend, her senses keen. I'll keep an eye out for any magical auras or disturbances as we proceed. Kylum follows, his demeanor calm but vigilant. I'll be prepared to provide any divine assistance if needed. Let's ensure we stay alert. Okay, players, this is a great stopping point. We'll pick up next time as you enter into the catacombs and explore what lies beneath. This has been Dead Man Fred, and if you liked this video, please subscribe for more Dungeons & Dragons content and other gaming videos that you might find interesting. Until next time, may the dice be forever in your favor.